Welcome to the Sports Betting Preview Show, a pregame.com podcast. This is segment one of four, Big Game Preview, Portland at Denver. I'm Marco D'Angelo, joined with Vegas Runner. We're going to break down Portland at Denver on Sunday. Quick note, for those of you listening on iTunes, we're going to do our podcast in reverse order, so we're going to talk about the games furthest out first. That would be the Sunday games, and then at the back we'll have the Saturday games. In case you're listening after Saturday, you don't want to listen to the Saturday games, you don't have to listen to the whole podcast to get to Sunday. So let's get things started. We're taping on Thursday, so we don't have the lines for these games yet here in Vegas. But as we always do, Vegas Runner and myself will put our numbers up on the game. Vegas Runner will talk in a true line, or what he thinks the number is, uh, should be. I will be talking at what I think the number will be based on Vegas. Exactly. To split the action. VR, Portland travels to Denver Sunday night. 10.30 10.30 Eastern Time, ESPN. What do P- we got? Portland's going to be off till that game. They played last night against Indiana and had no problem spanking them by 23 points. On the flip side, Denver plays Indiana. Um, when's that? Friday, I think it is. Tomorrow, they play. Um, so, I mean... This will be Denver's fourth game in a five-night stretch. Right. So, I, I mean, that might influence a little bit what the number is. But I made my true number. I made Denver a four-and-a-half-point home favorite. And I set the total at 199-and-a-half. I do think it'll come out a little higher as far as the side goes. Okay, I made it Denver 7. Yeah, see, I, I have no no doubt that Vegas will bring it out higher. I just think don't think that that's a true reflection of, of what the number should be. But I, I do agree that they're going to bring it up a, a it, little higher than what I got. Let me correct myself on one thing I said. I said that Denver will be playing four games in five nights. Actually, they just finished, finished playing a four-game four yeah, yeah, and five-night stretch. And uh, the final two on the end of that – was playing the Lakers in Phoenix, uh, you know, two tough games on, on the, the road. road. Lost them both you know, back to back. Them. So, but they have gone four and two their last six games. Uh, no shame in that with the two losses being Lakers and Phoenix, which right now, you know, the Phoenix Suns, you got to say that they're, you know, maybe the hottest team in basketball. Yeah, and I like the way Denver responded yesterday. Um, that was actually a game I used as a free pick. Couldn't confirm it to make it official, but I thought they would, that here's an opportunity for us. Okay, leave it behind us. We lost to the two best teams other than us in the West, you know, fe- arguably at least, yeah. Phoenix and the Lakers. Now we got to get on and start knocking down some wins. So I really thought we were going to get their A game yesterday, and we did. The problem I have looking at this game is all these teams are bunched in up together so much. When you look at this division, the Northwest standings, they're all within three or four games. So each and every, every night, year. yeah, and each and every night, each team, when they play each other, you expect their A game is going to be there. But there's only so much A game you could bring to the table. And, and when you're playing Denver, Utah, Oklahoma City, and Portland, and them four teams, every game matters amongst each other, you're going to have some nights where the team just doesn't bring it. And the key, I think, is to try to find the situation where they won't be able to bring it, where maybe it is the fifth game in, in six nights or or something like that, or coming off a last-second jumper that won the game. I think you need to really look closely at who they played before, Well, when you, like the way you, you handicap it. Absolutely. Well, first of all, let, let's say that coming back home and bouncing back the way they did last night, Oklahoma City's playing good Exactly, basketball. exactly. And I know a lot of betters were taking the points with Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City right now, they, you know, stamp it, Marco's going to say it, they're one of the young and upcoming teams. I agree with you. We, that you're going to hear. I agree with you. If they keep this core together and they continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, a draft pick and a free agency signing away from from Sky's going to be yeah, the limit yeah. on, on this team. Um, going back to Denver, and we talked about, you know, the scheduling and you look at, you know, who teams played and, you know, when they played, how they played. Um that stretch, I think, took its toll on Denver uh, for those final two games at the Lakers and Phoenix. Not only were they playing two good, good ball clubs, but when you're playing them 
on the end of a road trip yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're tired, they ended up only shooting in those two games 36 and 43%. Yeah, they didn't break the 90 points against either you know, of them. And that's not that's not Denver basketball. No, no, exactly. You, you, you think of Denver basketball, I mean, first thing right away, it's Carmelo. You and know, they're going to score. score. I mean, they're the second highest scoring offense right. in, in the NBA. So and, for them not to crack 90 when playing a team like the Suns, who, who is willing to get at it with you, right. or the Absolutely. Lakers, which Lakers like to have court, but you could push them. Lakers, the, the Lakers, if you could get them to run, they're going to run, you know. The, the Lakers can play either way. Exactly. That's the thing. They got the luxury of you. Yeah, play, yeah. You want to run, we'll run. But yeah, you want to we'll slow play, this down, play, uh, we'll do that yeah. too. Yeah. And, and I think, honestly, I think the Lakers are more dangerous when they do that do triangle that. offense. They play, they yeah, play yeah. that half court game and slow it down because then all the possessions become. They so matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And teams that don't play defense. And I think that's one of the, the keys to the West is that. So many teams don't play D. Night they, in and rather, night out. They yeah. rather play that up tempo. Let's, up and down let's the outscore court. our opponent instead of trying to stop them from scoring. And it's one of the reasons why. I mean, I know we're flipping around other teams, and it's almost like an NBA preview here. But year in and year out, the Spurs are always in the playoffs. Right, right, right. Because it's no that style what, of ball. Yeah. When it comes playoff time, defense wins. It, it frustrates these teams. Now, I think Denver last year took a major stride when they had the addition of Chauncey Billups. Yeah, yeah, that was he, huge. He, and now he's, he's come into his own, his, his, his position and what his contribution for the team has been established. Like, night in and night out, he knows his role now. It's so defined. I, I like this team. But it, all, it gives this team a defensive presence. Yes, yeah, for sure, and that they never had. As a, and plus, a veteran floor leader, that's got experience, right? It's right, smart right. And to complement Carmelo, I mean, I think it didn't, you know, I it just didn't work when they had Iverson and and you know, in Carmelo, you no. can't you can't have two no two no big no scorers like that, you know, coexist. It just it, it, there's not enough basketball. Getting back to this game, and I think they will bring Denver out higher than than what I think the true line goes is because, I mean, this is also a revenge game for them. Portland beat them and beat them convincingly, you know, by 11 points. They were they were a favorite. Portland was minus one at home. That happened Christmas Day. And they had no problems beating Denver. But to beat Denver, they had to shoot 53% field goals and 52% from the three-point line. Mm-hmm. Now, I know Denver's defense isn't the greatest, but I don't think they're going to have as easy a time going into Denver to do that. Um, you know, Especially when you look at that game, and at one point Denver was up by double digits. It just ha- so happens it's one of those times where a team shoots 55% from the three point line and from the field goal, you know, from the court. I'm anywhere on the court, I mean, and there's always so much you could do. When a team shoots like that, lights out, yeah. they're going to beat you. I don't have an official free pick on this game. Yeah, I, I don't either, to be I honest. I actually, with you. if you put the gun to my head looking at this game, and again, we don't know what the total's actually going to be, but I think think there should be some value in the total based on the first two meetings. Yeah. That I think you're gonna see a reversal of form and I think you're gonna see a more up tempo game. And I'm leaning I'm leaning towards the over. Yeah, I I don't think it'll come up about above two hundred. You know, so I think you'll get a fair total. You know, because when you when you think of Portland, you you, you automatically think low, you know, that's what I'm saying. Form. And and the way Denver's been, you know, Playing them games tougher games, had- exactly. So I think we might see a, a a lower total that it won't be in the high 200s. If anything, I had it set at 199, 199 and a half, and I would be surprised if it comes out too much higher than that. Absolutely. Well, uh, no official free pick here, but don't forget, you can go to pregame.tv, go to the comment section, put in what you think your projected score is going to be. If you hit it on the head, we will give you $100 in pregame dollars. It's free. Just make a guess on the game. Tell Take a us shot. Your, give it a shot. Your prediction on the game. If you're right, $100. Uh, this is going to wrap up this uh, segment. We'll be back with three more segments. And don't forget, if you want to download and listen, go to iTunes, punch in pregame.com for the search, bring up all of our podcasts, and you can download and listen to us anytime. 
jogging, ride to work, whatever. To have Marco in VR on that iPod. What's better than that? It doesn't get any better than <laughs> that, my friend. All right, this is segment one. We'll be back with segment two. We're going to take a look at Lakers at Orlando on Sunday. <laughs> 